<clears throat> so this um, whole issue of, of rocket science and rocket engines and how to build rockets and so on, like, um, yeah, it's it's very it's, it has a very weird history. I think uh, the history of the rocket, and the, and the space rocket, it connects more to things like you know the V twos in World War Two, and I've read Gravity's Rainbow, that's my favourite novel. So I'm kind of I'm well versed in this history, and it connects really. It you know it is it's never been part. Like until really quite recently of civil aviation, if you want to call it aviation as such, as opposed to like space exploration or invent new terms for it. I mean, part of it involves aviation, obviously you go through the air, right? It's also an aircraft, a rocket. But I mean, you know, as soon as like um, the car's invented, you know, and, and the car is invented by basically some guy working in his garage, as I understand it, some uh, inventor, tinkerer type, you know, and... Uh, he builds on the internal combustion engine, you know, and um, that's, that's not, that doesn't come out of a university department, I don't think, does it? Um, I don't. I think it comes out of like, uh, you know, probably some engineering collaboration back in, I say, the mid nineteenth century, and um, probably like, you know, lay the foundations with uh, steam engines, which again. I suspect didn't come out of any academic department or any like, government research institute. And you know, all this stuff initially, yeah, it's coming out of the private sector by, um, you know, gentlemen inventors and these sorts of people. And um, yeah, but with the rocket engine, it's a little bit different because, um, you know, with um, the automobile and planes, you know, you have the Wright brothers. Um, come up with the aircraft in the early 19th century, the Wright Flyer, neither of them have degrees. <laughs> and, um, you know, people building planes back then, just because you can, you can do it. You know, anyone can build a plane. You know, anyone can build a car. And you get all these sorts of people doing this. I get people, like, again, unaffiliated teams of enthusiasts, basically, doing things like breaking world land speed records and all this sort of stuff. And um, you know, well now, I mean, what what those efforts have transformed into are sort of like the great automobile engineering houses of of modernity, you know, and um, and likewise with planes. So you know, you get your like Ferraris and Lamborghinis and Aston Martins on the car side of things. And then you get like your your De Havilland's and Lockheed Martins. Um, in the aviation side of things, but um, the history of the rocket. The space rocket is altogether uh, shadier. It connects some um, to doodlebugs and um, V2 and V1 rockets uh, in the Third Reich in World War II. Uh, following World War II, all rocket propulsion research programs were absolutely underneath a hammerlock under the Eisenhower and McCarthy administrations, because you have the Cold War kicking off just about then. Then you get like uh, the Rosenbergs selling nuclear secrets of the United States to the to the Soviet Union. And um, then you get the rise of ICBMs and um, the nuclear arms race, uh, which went hand in hand with the space race. So really what the rocket is, is a symbol of is a symbol of it in this period of history in like the f the mid 50s to mid 60s it you know to to the pe is intended as to the people who matter on either side uh, a symbol of nuclear prowess or a symbol of prowess in the ability to build nuclear weapons and you know the fact that we can launch a guy into space on top of a rocket um, or the fact that we can launch some ch chimps into space or this that and the other or put a guy on the moon, it's like, uh, to policy makers, to anyone who's really important in being able to get the funding for that sort of thing, the only people who, math, you know, appealing to like, we can go and find life in alien worlds, not interested. We can go colonise alien worlds and start agriculture on them, not interested. Like, we can show our people, and we can show the people of the Soviet Union, that we are the dominant superpower on the planet. Like, now we're interested. Like, Okay. Um, likewise, I have to remind you that any sort of investment in rocketry by government organisations in modernity achieves exactly the same thing, because it is always a testament to our technical sophistication and might that we can build machines like this, and that we can, you know, that we are, you know, bold and daring enough to be able to, you know, put our people on alien worlds and 
you know, we'll be right at the forefront of the technology when all the um, the, the patents for, say, Martian agricultural systems come through and we'll be on the head of the technical race on that level and then manufacturing and energy in space and whatnot. And, you know, we'll be ahead of the game on, on all levels. Or hopefully in the future we have something a little bit less, you know, dick waving and a little bit more cooperative possibly and a bit more grown up and sensible rather than, you know, turning space exploration and rocketry into a, a, a dick swinging or pissing contest. Um, you know, like it really had been in the past, frankly. And then, you know, Richard Nixon decides our on the moon, he's like, we don't need to spend money on fucking rockets now. You fucking oily scumbag. But it's, yeah, we could, we could easily have had the Saturn V sort of flying to the moon now. We easily could have done. Just a slightly fucking updated version of it. <laughs> like it was the ideal rocket for getting to the moon. We just didn't rebuild it. I got a stupid SLS, which does the same thing but doesn't seem to, or does the same thing but worse. Um, yeah. So, what was my major point? Like, uh, yeah, everything like um, cars, planes, boats. Um, you know, there is no military angle. So, well, there, there sort of is, I suppose, or they're incorporated in the military, aren't they? But I mean, um, not in the, not in their inception. It's straight away, like, yeah, military applications as well, but also commercial, on uh, on both levels. You know, you get um, civil aviation rising with aviation, basically. But um, you know, you try letting off a off a rocket that'll get to space in the nineteen fifties. It's like <laughs> you'll get some people like seriously coming and giving a hard time for doing something like that. If, if word gets around that you're building something in your back garden that looks like a warhead. You know, people just like, you know, shout on the phone, to, if your neighbour's building a rocket, like, they'll just say, warhead, right? And then like, woo, woo, cars show up. That's what people are really afraid of with this. This is why basically, this is why rocketry, like, is nowhere near as popular as cars or aviation. You know, loads and loads and loads of people are into cars. Loads of people build cars. Loads of people uh, renovate, trick out, do up cars. You get people out there like yeah, gearheads know everything about cars, and you know, lots of those people can build cars and build good cars, and you know, some people build really good cars. And I'm just thinking, like, what is it necessarily about a rocket so much fucking more complicated than a car? Like, that actually nothing. Nothing is more complicated about a rocket than a car. Nothing at all. I mean, I've seen a, uh, an internal combustion engine and I've seen a rocket engine. Um, I think the internal combustion engine is more complicated than the rocket engine. I'd, I'd um, treat the task of having to construct an internal combustion engine with a bit more like trepidation and be like, mm, than a rocket engine or a jet engine. Like, Actually simpler than the internal combustion engine, I think. But, you know, a turbofan jet engine, as I still think, is more complicated than a rocket engine. <laughs> I do. I do think it is. I mean, what, what do you have to do, like, on a, on a turbofan jet engine? Yeah, it's got fuel injectors, a turbofan, uh, igni uh, you know, things for igniting the injected fuel. Um, and, like, that's quite a simple, like, rather elegant design, I think. I like jet engines. I think they're great. But like, well, I just think like a rocket engine is more like just liquid oxygen and hydrogen or liquid kerosene or whatever, just without the turbofan in it. <laughs> so it, it's only slightly simpler, seemingly like yeah. But then again, I, I know like there's a lot of, a lot of ways, yeah, a simple design can, you know, greatly fox you or like be greatly problematic and there's all sorts of subtleties involved with rocketry I know and you know like um, correcting turbulence and laminar flow in the engines and all this sort of stuff and you know pitch and yaw and the thingy but yeah I don't see like the challenge inherent in constructing a liquid fuel engine being much greater or at all greater than that of constructing an internal combustion engine an internal combustion engine is something I probably wouldn't attempt I'd probably just buy one <laughs> But like building a rocket engine, yeah, I'd build it. I think I could build it. And like, I think it's because of like really the secrecy, isn't it? And the sort of um, 
that the boot heel of the government stamping on rocket technology and i think this like big impulse of you know trying to keep everyone away from space you know and like really trying to like you know prevent any kind of private interest in space for a very long time isn't it yeah it it's not because you know if you start dominating out there as a private person industry you know the united states like they'll, they'll lose dominance they'll begin losing dominance you know if you start controlling space infrastructure and things like this you become exceedingly powerful and you know maybe rightly so compared to the united states and what they've done throughout history but yeah i mean the rocket engine like not not a huge challenge not a hard challenge i don't think i've seen videos of all sorts of people creating like liquid fuel engines basically um on youtube like out of old bits of metal i don't think i'll go quite that cheap and simple <laughs> and you know get the whole like um fuel injector delaval nozzle system going on and try to model it on a you know some really more of a uh a, a robust design of a rocket engine and you know try and like copy well not copy exactly but uh adapt the design of the rs25 engines to what i want to do see everyone says oh it's not rocket science like why is rocket science so hard like why is that harder than automotive engineering or air or aerospace engineering or, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be treated as harder it is it, there's an undue mystique about it is um you know it's not oh, agricultural engineering why is it more difficult than that have you seen how complicated some agricultural machines are like combine harvesters are an exceedingly complicated machine and on an internal combustion engine it's far more complicated than a rocket far more complicated rockets aren't that complicated they're a very simple machine i think that's the point of this